Today's video is hiding a big secret, and no, I don't just mean these vintage baseball cards. I mean it's hiding some real furniture flipping potential. Stay tuned as we turn some lemons into lemonade. I picked up this Ethan Allen coffee table at an estate sale for the bargain price of $3, which is a great starting point. It has quite a few scratches on it that are gonna need some attention, but I have a great idea for this flip, so stay tuned. I'll start off by using my favorite degreaser, Simple Green with some warm water. I'm scrubbing this coffee table down with a drill attachment scrub brush that helps to get into all those nooks and crannies. And it really helps cut down any of that furniture polish that might have been previously used on the piece. It's just an easy way to scrub everything quickly. I'll go over this a few times with the Simple Green and then wash it off with some warm water. I really don't love these handles, but at the moment I don't have anything to replace them with. So I'm gonna take them off and put them to the side and see if I can think of a good finish for this that will go with the end result. I'm trying to keep my overhead pretty low on this one and reusing these handles will really help, but they definitely need an upgrade. So I got a new toy for today's video, and this project is the perfect thing to use this on. I have never had a belt sander before because I was just super intimidated by it, but this large flat surface that I need to sand and sand it quickly, this is gonna be the perfect thing to try this out on. So let me just show you really quickly how easy this is to use. So I got a Makita belt sander and it is time for me to change the pad on the bottom. And this is the where it's just so simple. So I just pull that lever up, take the piece of sandpaper out. It'll come off in one big strip. Then I've got my replacement sandpaper. Just make sure you order the right size. And you wanna pay attention to where the arrow is right here, because on the inside of the sandpaper, there is a corresponding arrow. Do you see those? So I wanna make sure that those are going the same way that my sander says they need to go. So I've got the, the inside of the sandpaper matched with the way that the arrow goes on the outside. And from there, I just line it up and get it ready to go. I'm using an 80 grit sanding belt on this and I don't know why I was so intimidated to try one of these for so long. It was so simple. Basically, I just pointed it in the direction I needed it to go and held on and the belt sander did the rest of the work for me. You can see how quickly this finish comes off the top. I literally had this entire top sanded in about five minutes. So I'm super curious to know if you could choose one new tool for your arsenal, what would it be? Shout out in the comments below. So now that I finished the top in record time, I turned this on its side to get the rest of the flat surfaces. I didn't want to use this on any of those curved edges on the bottom. Obviously it would take that detail off, but anything that's flat, this was awesome.
For the scallop details, I'm using some clean strip furniture stripper. I'll apply a good amount of this and let it sit for about five minutes, and then I'll start to scrub it off with a wire brush. I used a chip brush to spread it around into the little nooks and crannies on the feet as well. All the products I'm using for this flip can be found in the description box below. I'm taking some mineral spirits on a rag and cleaning up all the residual paint stripper. No, I haven't lost my mind, nor am I incredibly frustrated at this coffee table. I'm actually doing a special technique on this today that's going to be really cool the more scratches and dents that this one has, so stay tuned to see what this turns into. For this project, I'm going to be using a product that is new to me, but it's called Aqua Coat, and it is a cabinet grain filler. And I got this in a white color, but I think it also comes in clear. You can order it on Amazon. And what this does is fill in all the grain and all of the holes. I'm gonna use it for a different reason that you use it for cabinets though. I'm going to use this to give my table more of a ceruced look. So it looks like there is white veins and white patches in all of the little holes that I just made. Once your table or your project is cleaned off completely, it says not to use tack cloths before you use this so you have the best adhesion possible. So you just wanna wipe down your surface with a damp rag or use compressed air like you just saw me do. Aqua Coat is a gel-like solution, so it won't dry on you immediately, which is great because you get a lot of workability out of this. You'll be able to apply the product in very thin coats. I went in the direction of the wood grain and then I wiped in the direction against the wood grain just to make sure this went into all the nooks and crannies really, really well. And then the final pass, the company recommends that you do with a scraper or a credit card just to take that last thin layer off the top before you let this dry. As I'm going along the scallops and the feet, I'm making sure that I am really shoving this aqua coat into all these details. I want a lot of this to be left behind after I do my ceruzing technique. And if you don't know what ceruzing is, it is a wood finishing technique that emphasizes the natural character of the wood grain, and it helps mute the original color of the wood. So in this case, we're gonna take out our orangey colored tones and greatly emphasize the wood's natural grain pattern. At first, it looks like we're just doing a whitewash, but once this dries, it's gonna turn into something very unique and different. I let this dry overnight and I'm going back in with a 180 grit sanding pad to remove the leftover aqua coat. You can do this ceruzing effect using white wax, but I find that it doesn't glide on as easily and it takes a lot more muscle work or strength to shove the wax into the veining of the wood. And the aqua coat, since it's a gel, glided on really easily like you saw without me having to use a wax brush to shove it into all of the details. I have sanded my little heart out getting this ceruced look that I'm going for. And now that all of that product has been shoved into the veining and the little wormholes that are in this coffee table, I would love nothing more than to apply a really great stain on this. 
But the more I look at it and the more I work with it, it's actually exactly the color that I want it to be right now. So it's got like that rustic goodness, looks like a little bit of a whitewash on the top. You could keep sanding and get rid of more of the whitewash effect, but I'm liking it the way it is. And since this is actually for my own house, it matches a piece of furniture that I'm wanting it to match. I want to take this a step further, but I just can't because if I do, then it won't match and then I can't keep it. And then I'm stuck looking for a coffee table again. Maybe later on down the road, I'll strip off the poly and I'll put some uh, stain on there. For today, I'm going to seal this up. We're gonna leave it as it is and then let you enjoy what it looks like at the end. Got my coffee table cleaned off. All of the sanding debris is off. So now I'm going to poly coat this in Minwax Polycrylic. I've got this in the matte finish. I love the finish on this product. I can only find it in my Lowe's store. The one, there's the only ones that carry the matte finish that I've found. So I'm going to apply this with my poly sponge and put on about three good coats since this is going to be a coffee table and it will get a lot of use. These poly sponges are really easy to use and the best part is they are reusable so you can totally wash this out when you're done using it and let it dry and use it again. I like to get mine just a little bit damp and then start applying the poly in thin coats. I don't normally recommend dipping your poly sponge into the can, but I am at the very bottom of this can. It's the last project I'm going to be able to get out of this one so that is okay in this case. And in between the coats of poly, I'm using a 400 grit sanding block to knock down any bits and bumps that are left over from the poly to ensure that my coffee table has a very smooth finish. And I almost forgot about these handles. I scrubbed them up really well with some soap and water and I don't exactly have the color that I'm going for for this one so I mixed together two colors of Rust-Oleum that I had to give it sort of this brushed bronze look. And here's a quick reminder of what my $3 coffee table looked like before. I figured at that price point, it gave me some wiggle room to try out my new tool and a new technique. And I'm actually really happy with the way that this one looks now. It's exactly what I was going for for my own TV room. Now it's time to get my new coffee table in place and some of you guys that have been here for a while remember when I flipped this one. And there's my culprit right there looking nice and guilty with the damage that he's done to this old coffee table. Now the challenge is going to be how do I keep him away from this new one? Any suggestions? Thank you so much for tuning in today, guys. Let me know what you thought of today's flip in the comments below. Be sure to like, follow, and subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time at Lemons to Lemonade Furniture.